Good afternoon and welcome to CAD One's presentation of Blue Beam Review. My name is Stan Henney. I'm the business development manager here at CAD One, but more importantly, on my left and your right is Brian Dejuge, AIA architect and technical specialist here at CAD One, and really our our Blue Beam specialist and instructor as well. We also have in the room today uh, Clint M. Serco, operations manager and construction specialist here at CAD One, and our newest member of the team, Devin Shea, is also here with us. Devin is an AIA associate, is that correct? Correct. And uh, Devin will be also uh, in the coming months teaching Revit and um, um, AutoCAD. AutoCAD and other programs here. So we will be um, getting started here real quick. The main purpose of this presentation today is to talk a little bit more about what you really have in Bluebeam. Most people think of it as a PDF uh, creator and that's about it and they don't really realize the full scope of power that they have in the Blue Beam products. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things you can do. That is right. But before we get on to that, let's just do a couple house cleaning, uh, cleaning things on here. Um, you can see here we have the presentation mode and uh, Stan, I'll let you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, most of you have been on a go-to by now, so you know the, you know the drill. Uh, if you're using your telephone, you have the tele telephone button clicked and mic and speakers, you have the mic and speakers button clicked. Can every you see the raise your hand button there? Can everybody raise their hand and let us know if you can hear us? Hopefully, it looks like most of you are lighting up, so that's good. If you want to get the console out of the way, hit the orange and white arrow, and you can move that out of the way. And most importantly, we do not um, uh, we aren't op opening the mic up, so. Basically, if you have questions, type them in on the question box, and we will try and get them answered as close to in context as we can. I do want to mention on June 27th, we're pleased we're having our 25th anniversary Customer Appreciation Day. It'll be at the Marriott Hotel in uh, Westminster, brand new hotel, beautiful place, and we've got some great speakers coming to uh, give a, a variety of presentations. Uh, not the least of which is Mr. Juge himself, along with Steve Jones from Blue Beam, yep. doing a live presentation on Blue Beam. It's free, and you can go to our website to register. Uh, uh, we will be recording this uh, presentation, and it probably will be posted. It usually takes so three or four days before uh, Danny's able to get to them and get them posted on the website. So probably sometime next week it'll be up and up and running. You can find that on our archive session. Um, those of, I, we have one con, comment from Joshua. We have no video, and I guess if you can see us, you. raise your hand if you can see your video. And at least, uh, okay, yeah. so quite a few of you can see the video. I'm not quite sure why uh, uh, one of you cannot. Uh, might be just your internet connection, or uh, if you can hear us, you should be able to see us. That's that, for sure. That All right, we have it time. now. Awesome. Okay, just making sure everybody's on board. Okay, <laughs> so with that, um, register at our website, www.cad1.com. You'll see the uh, Customer Appreciation Day uh, banner, and click on that. It's over on the right-hand side of the page. We hope to see all of you here, and we've got a lot of people in this presentation today, Brian. All right, yep, we're, we're chalking it up, and the numbers keep coming in. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, getting into Bluebeam, really, what is Bluebeam, and I would say for the most part, uh, at least my background and what I knew is that it creates PDFs. That's about all I know for many, many years. <laughs> um, and here we got the little click, a Bluebeam uh, review. That's the name of the actual program that does it. Uh, creates PDFs for editing, markup, collaboration. Uh, you can use that for creation, communication, uh, reviewing certain documents. And then it comes in three types of editions. That's either standard, CAD, or extreme. And they say, simply put, it will change your life as you know it. And uh, I would say here at CAD 1, it, I wouldn't say it's changed our lives, but it's definitely opened up the door for a lot more uh, uh, versatility in the software that we have and a lot more versatility within the construction site, what you can do and view on that. Um, 
So now getting into kind of what I'm going to cover, and no, this just won't be PowerPoint. I'll actually go in and demo some of these things. But we have the create, comment, and collaborate. Those are kind of the three main things that uh, Bluebeam can do. And again, it's a PDF creator that goes and creates those, and that can be either created from Word, from AutoCAD, Revit, uh, a number of different pieces of software. Pretty much any, any software you'd use to create a Adobe PDF file you can use to create Bluebeam That's PDF. Right. right, Stan? That's right. Awesome. Um, so today I'll be doing a little bit on the different notes and clouding, just kind of going through a lot of the little tools, some of the things I find very exciting, how to create bookmarks for navigation. Um, you can do things like line styles and stuff. I'll do uh, a lot of the features I like uh, in here. And then if you have anything in particular that you want to see or questions about, we'll try to fit those in. Uh, in addition, I'll do some stuff with color processing, which is a way of filtering out materials. We'll definitely look at things like batch linking, which is a new feature in Review 12. Uh, what that allows me to do is create hyperlinks within my drawings. So all those detail references and things like that that you've created, uh, you send out as a, as, a, as a PDF, well, anybody getting that end document isn't going to be able to, you know, swap or change from one page to another or one document to another. So there's a way to create those links or we can create a link within the file that sends me to a website or a cut page or somewhere in the specs. And that's where a lot of the uh, beauty of this com uh, comes in there. Um, measuring and takeoff tools. You know, a lot of people don't know that I can do quantity takeoffs from Bluebeam right from a PDF and start doing cost estimating, things like that in there. Just some really powerful um, tools that are available for just a simple PDF file. Um, and then other things, layers uh, within there. So that's a bit of what we'll cover today uh, within the file. So without further ado, I'm just going to fire it up unless anybody else has anything else to add. No? Nope. All right. So here we're going to go in to Bluebeam. And right, the, uh, right off the start, we can see this is kind of the interface here. And lo and behold, I've got a little actual 3DF or 3D PDF uh, in here. So yes, you can do 3DF stuff and kind of zoom around um, with right within that file. So this was created from Revit uh, in here, and I've got these little blue, I was going to say, <laughs> blue ball things. Um, and those blue balls represent markup files. There's no laughing in here. I, I know there's it. no laughing, but so you did it to yourself on we that can, one. We can click on those and see some markups in here. So I'm allowed to go in and start seeing what's going on inside that PDF. So just a, just a real quick in there on what we can go and do. So I can see that there's markups that are inside here that someone was measuring a certain thing or marking up a certain item in here. And that's just some kind of a nice thing to do within the file. Um, <laughs> But then I can come in and kind of spin around or take a look at this particular asset, see that some uh, over here it's a, a roof. So kind of a, a nice thing to have. Okay. So here's what the interface looks like. And over here I've got, you know, open files, things like that. I've got bookmarks I can put in here, the different pages I'm looking at. I've got a tool chest. And these are kind of the things I'm going to cover. So this is kind of your navigation in some of our tools. On the right side, for those of you who are new, these are going to be things like properties, Measure tools, want to go in and do measurements, or the studio environment. We'll talk about the studio environment towards the end. And then down here at the bottom, this is going to be all my markups and where they're at. And I can go in and click on a certain thing, and it'll actually highlight to those markups that are in here. So if I want to look for that link, I can click on this, and it hyperlinks me to it. That's, the, that's one of the beauty of it. All the, all the markups, all the links that I have in here are being done and recorded. Now... Uh, another great thing is this interface, I can customize it for myself. So in here i got this little profile area, and right now I've got it for takeoffs, but if I want to go in and do uh, Brian and March, I've got this one with my tools in here, or I can come back into maybe an office layout, and I've got the office tools the way those look. So I can customize this for, my, for myself, takeoffs in here, I've got this. Okay. Another nice thing is because we're using this uh, with other programs, Bluebeam actually will write its own particular software uh, within the uh, programs, uh, the programs itself. So if I'm in Word and I'm using a document that has hyperlinks, those hyperlinks will actually copy over from Word, uh, and now I can click on them in Bluebeam or in another uh, PDF viewer by using the Bluebeam tools, and then it will create a hyperlink either to another document or a website or whatever we want. 
Brian, we've got a question from Alan. Alan asks, are there, are there file size limitations for a 3D PDF? As far as I know, I am unaware of them, uh, of there being any. Uh, I think it has a basically coming into what the machine can handle. So it, from what I know, uh, no. I've seen uh, some of Bluebeam files get pretty big really quickly, uh, depending on the, on the project you're working on, the PDF files that you're working on. We're using Bluebeam 12, Rick, and it's, uh, you know, we always recommend the latest version, quite frankly. Yeah, and I would say the latest version has a lot of nice tools in it. Um, I'm actually going to open up Auto, uh, or Revit here for you a know, second. I, oh. I think uh, it caught me there, and Rick just asked the question, does he recommend standard CAD or extreme? I, I think CAD is probably the starting level yes. for most situations. Well, standard and CAD, there's a couple more features in CAD that aren't available in standard, but um, actually what I've found in most offices, standard seems to be the best. But what I would recommend is if you have an office, uh, standard or CAD, depending on, on which there's a little bit of nuances between the two, but have a copy of Extreme around uh, because of the versatility that you can have with OCR, which is optical character recognition. That's the ability for me to go in, especially if I'm on the receiving end of PDFs and I can't generate those PDF files. I want to be able to have the thing recognize text and stuff. So if I'm getting a bid set from an uh, uh, for a project and I've got manuals upon manuals of documents, I won't be able to search through that text. If there's scanned files, it won't recognize the text. So I need something that has OCR. That's only available in the Extreme Edition. Also, there's going to be another feature I'm going to show that's only available on Extreme, and that's going to be the batch link uh, that I'm in love with uh, uh, um, here. And I would say it's only available in Extreme. Now, you don't need it. Everybody doesn't need to have it, but you need to have someone in the office that can run it really quick to create those hyperlinks, that way you can go in and use them later on. Rick, I would say, and just getting back to your question, Brian's right. I would say, I guess where I was coming from is in the sales part of things, for the most part, CAD is the yeah. widest selling version that we sell here. So uh, that's kind of what everybody is buying. Uh, will we be showing any of the demos using AutoCAD? Um, I wasn't planning on it. Again, the Revit version or the CAD version, it was just to show that there's tools actually inside of, of here. So here I get the created PDFs. Um, it's kind of the same interface. You're going to have these similar icons that look like this uh, within CAD. Uh, I could take a couple minutes and fire that up in a little bit, but that wasn't my plan. I might end up showing that. What I really wanted to get in here is that this is the menu that drops in, and it could be for Word, uh, for CAD, for PowerPoint, whatever you're working on, this little menu comes in here. Now it's going to vary per the program. In Revit, it has the ability to create these 3D PDFs. It's not available in AutoCAD, but that's a function that's available here for Revit. So different uh, programs out there are going to have different features that you can go in and grab. In this case, for Revit, it's going to be 3D PDFs. But I can go in here and create this 3D PDF uh, from this just by simply um, creating this button right here. Uh, I also got a thing for the settings. By clicking on that, it gives me all the settings that I can do from Revit what kind of signatures might be in here, different file attachments, stamps, bookmarks, security. Yes, we can have password creation in here that the, to print it. You must have the password. And then we got things like page setups. Uh, so I can say, well, what pages can I, what page sizes I can print to uh, within it. Looks like we had another question. Can you do 3D PDFs with the review 11.7? Yes, you can. I believe 11, uh, review 11 had it is when uh, it first came out. Yep. I don't think it's available in 10. I could be wrong, but I believe it was released out in 11. 12 just came out in February. So that was the newest release for 12. Uh, but in here, I've got all these settings. And again, this is unique per uh, my session that I'm running in here. So if I want to create that 3D PDF, I just select that, tell it where I want it to go. In this case, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. And it's going to crank away, um, process that thing, and it will run through it for a little bit. I'm just going to switch back over here. Um, hopefully it gives me a notification. If not, it should pop up on my screen on here in a little bit. So I'll just keep going on as that generates because it might take a little bit to go and do. Yeah, as you can see, it's still cranking away for making that. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, now on to kind of the next part in here. On the right-hand side, I have different things. So if I want to go in, and I'll actually go to my – this is actually the slideshow we'll be looking at. But I can go in here. Oh, I do have that popping up. And I've got my different review things, so I can go in here and put a note. So if I want to type a note, oh, here it goes, loading up that model. 
So we'll see the magic here in a second. Patrick, I, I think that, you know, you'll have to judge whether it's this is a good use of your time. I will say that, you know, whether you're using 2D or 3D, uh, you know, yes, we're talking about some 3D PDFs right now, but the, the fact of the matter is the the way it works is virtually the same, so you just kind of have to make the mental translation, and we, we certainly don't want to alienate any of the folks that are online with us that are using, you know, AutoCAD or Civil 3D or anything else. It pretty much works the same across the board with a few minor fluctuations. Yeah, I would say the, from the rest of this presentation, other than the 3D PDF, everything that you'll see is what you would get out of AutoCAD. So um, th th this isn't going to vary. Uh, outside of uh, the 3D PDFs, everything else is going to be exactly what you get from AutoCAD or from Word in that matter. Uh, what I mean by that is that, again, we could have spec stuff, so think about that in a, in a little bit. So this is just the file result, and I can walk through, and for some of you that's great, some of you it isn't. There's different ways I could view that file, change the background, change uh, the time of day or what I'm looking at. So it just gives us a little bit more options on uh, how I could view that stuff. So I'm not going to play with this anymore. I'm going to kind of abandon that file on here and get back to this one. So I have a way, and this is just a, a title page here, and I can actually get into this document and see I have multiple pages to this document. So I have about 27 pages in here for this particular thing. And, but I can go in here and just write simple notes or draw some text inside, and it's looking at those markups that I'm doing down in here. So I can highlight something, and I can either highlight it in here, or because it's recognizing text, I can highlight the text in here. Now that can be done in a document or with this particular uh, program I'm working here. I'm going to go into a uh, cover sheet. Maybe I'm looking for a particular phrase or set of words in here. So one of the nice things I can do is I have this search feature inside. So if I want to come in and look for an instance of this, uh, I can go in here and search for, uh, in this case, w slash uu. We get uppercase in here, uu. Uh, and I'm just going to do the current page and hit search. And that'll search through the whole document, kind of looking for every instance of that particular thing might be on there. Um, once that's done, I can go in there and type on it, and it links to it. So I don't have many instances of that, but I've got some other things in here. Maybe I want to go in, find something then in here. Maybe I want to look for the number seven in this particular document. I can go in here and search. Here's on the current page all the links for number seven. So I have it here, 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 uh, linking me to those particular things. So I can go in and search for that particular thing. But maybe I want to look for this particular symbol. Instead of just looking for a number or a piece of text, I actually go into visual search in here and do a search like this. Now it's looking for that particular thing. I just go in here and do a search. It's now going to take some time and run through this whole document, looking for every instance that that thing appears in here. And now I can run through the document and say it's got one here, it's got one here. And obviously, I need to tone this up so it's looking a little bit less because it's picking up every instance of a different number. But here we've got another number six. And as I'm going through, I'll just check off the ones. Yes, that's confirmed. I like that one. That's another one. So I'll confirm that. Confirm that one. Uh, I've got a couple more. And I can check these off on the list. And then one, I can go inside of here. And it's giving me a little bit of error. There we go. Uh, I can highlight the checked off ones and underline them or apply a counting measure for them. Uh, and then inside here, I've got each one of these marked off on my list. And if I zoom out, I can see, okay, I've marked up how many they are. I have a total count for how many of them would be in my project. So this is providing me really quick uh, references for something in the file. Now, in the, in the case of, of specs and stuff like that, um, I can go in and look for a particular phrase or word within, you know, a thousand page document. If I know that in that bid, I'm going to have a higher cost because of a certain product name, I'll just list that product, point it at a particular file or a group of files and have it search for that particular product. And then I can have it highlighted for me, mark it and hyperlink it so that I can go in and check and check on those things or have it search through a whole list of maybe a uh, 200, uh, uh, file uh, uh, drawings to look for specific details or something like that in there. And that makes it a kind of a nice thing to do. One of the other great things is every one of these pages I have right now, it's listed as page one to page two, page three, page four. 
Uh, I'm actually going to come in here and use a very simple search command, and I'm going to create page labels on that. So I'm going to come in here and select this little icon, go in here and select the different page number, in this case just like that. And I have that region in here. Go and put a little underscore, add another one to this, and I'm going to get the page name. Okay, because no one sent me the page name, page numbers. Now when I look through there, um, it's going to generate, based on those page names and page numbers, a numbering system. So here's the cover sheet. doesn't have a page. Now I can go to this one, and I can see over here right away what page I'm on in this. So this becomes a really good feature to have within it. If you're getting those documents and they're just not clear and you want to go into a specific detail page, hey, I want to go to this detail over here, A4.1. Well, which sheet is that? Now it becomes really easy. I can go through my list and find it and realize that that was actually, in this case, you know, page 14 or something like that, so or 17. So instead of memorizing 17, I can go directly to that page. I don't have to go in and do a lot of searching or anything like that. Brian Patrick has a question. Is the search and highlighting specific to Bluebeam? Um, if you're asking, are the search itself is, uh, I mean, I believe Adobe has another search feature that's similar to it. As far as the highlighting goes, no. If you have another PDF viewer, you could see these highlights and check marks and things like that and view it in there. So I don't have to have my whole team uh, necessarily owning that to see my markups. They'll be able to see the markups and do that. As far as the list down below and how to link it for that, that is unique to Bluebeam. There is a product out there called Bluebeam View, which is a free viewer. And you can go in and download that for viewing stuff, but it doesn't allow you to mark up. But it does allow you to go in and view specific items and view things that are out there. And Matt asks, and maybe you're going to get to this in a bit, but um, uh, he's asking about the uh, icon and name of the command to create labels. Uh, there is a uh, label uh, over here. So I have two. I have bookmarks and I have thumbnails. And in the bookmarks and thumbnails, at the top, I can either create bookmarks in here, so creating bookmarks, or if I go to the pages, I can create page labels. Now that I've created page labels, I can go over to bookmarks and do the same thing, create bookmarks, but this time, I'll just since I've already done it by page labels, I'll just keep selecting page labels, hit OK, and then it just gener generates that list based off of the page labels that I've already generated. But the process would be the same. I can go in here and go and do the same process and select that stuff if I wanted to. So I'm just going to hit escape out of there. I've already kind of done that process. But this, this is a great tool for putting uh, this kind of stuff uh, together. All right. On the beginning page, I can go in and pin down certain objects. So in this case, if I have uh, this sample project I was working on before, I can go in here and look at it. One of the other nice features we have is I have a way of comparing different documents together. So in this case, I'm going to end up having two different sample projects. So I have the Reddit sample and one with revisions on here. And I know there's changes, but no one's marked those changes out. So I'm going to go over to my uh, document file, and I'm going to do a comparison and compare documents. And so for the first document, I'm just going to go in and grab my sample project. For the second one, I'm going to go in and grab the revisions. Okay, so it's grabbing two different revision files in here. Um, I'm actually going to go in and turn this down a little bit and get this. I guess we're down zero here at OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to go back through all those documents, and there's six pages in those documents, and do a comparison between the two and cloud and delta the changes. So the document on your left is the one with the differences between it. The document on the right is the original one. So what I did is I had or revisions that came out. And the other nice thing is it kind of syncs these two files together. So if I zoom in on one, I've automatically come in here. And I can see, oh, look, it's clouded this. It's clouded the date. It's already made some changes over there. I've got some changes over here. Instead of the super sample, super advanced sample project, um, I've got the basic project. So there were some changes that were done in the file in there. If I go down to the next sheet, actually, I'll go, well, I'll go down to this sheet here. We can see the trees moved around. Uh, I've got some, some changes here on the building. This particular tree element's been changed. And then I've got some other stuff where it's picked up these window mark changes. So these were, were 46s, now they're 48s in here, and it's 
cloud all this stuff for me. I can see that in this case, this particular building's moved down on, uh, this was in metric. I like using this file because it is a metric, and we're going to do cost estimating in a second and area takeoff. So uh, this is a nice instance of that. All right, we have a question. What if it is a scanned copy? That is a great question. So I'm going to go back through and do this compare documents because we get those things that we have them scanned in, and this was great. They're printed from the same printer. They're pretty clear. But if I go into this advanced area in here, I have some preset settings, different printers or scanned documents. And what it's going to do if I choose a scanned document, it's going to lessen the tolerance for it. Another thing that happens is, let's say they're scanned, but we all know if people are running them in by hand, they might not exactly do them straight. So another feature that you can go and do is you can actually pick three different points uh, within each of the documents, and it will kind of geo-reference those things kind of a weird term to use, but it will reference, triangulate those things and reference those things together, um, and then you'll, they'll be able to correct them. And that also works if they're at different scales. So if someone failed to scan, to scan it at full size and they maybe did like, you know, 92% uh, of the original and you've got two different changes in there, you can go in and that will correct the scale difference between the two documents to run the comparison. Now, it'll be a little bit different, so you have to play with those settings each time, uh, but it doesn't take too much time to figure out once you've gotten the system down. I just make a couple little slider changes, and then I can pretty much get in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. Brian R., does that answer your question? Because it's kind of along those lines. So uh, I think uh, Brian asked, will it pick up changes in sizes? I hope I've answered that for you. Uh, yes, it, yes, it will. You just pick the three points, and then it'll scale those up and down for you. All right, so this becomes kind of a, a nice uh, change in document in here. And again, I've got these pages synced uh, together, and I can run the comparison from that. And then down at the bottom, again, that's all hyperlinked, so I can run through these, and it picks up on it. Uh, also, in this one, it actually picked up um, changes in here on the actual photograph. I re-rendered this, so I was able to pick up that, hey, some of these shadow line changes a little bit. The building grew a little bit. Um, the windmills in the background grew. I never changed any of the others, but I did change that one. I was just trying to see how much it would pick up on. Okay. Another type of comparison that we can do is an overlay of documents. Let's see if I've got everything in here for that. Yeah. I'm not going to save these files. I'm just canceling them in here. So I've got one for structure. I've got one for MEP in this particular document. And I'm just going to run a comparison between these two documents in here. Whoops, not that one. An overlay, that's what I want. So what an overlay is going to do is I'm going to be able to pick, let's see if I got one, there we go, the structure one in there. And it'll lay both these files on top of each other. And I'm going to pick some alignment points in here because I don't think they're in the same exact spot. So I'm going to come in here and pick 3A. That's going to be one point. And I come over here and pick and just double check this one. B. Got some extra grids. And then I've got this third point down in here. So I've geo referenced one grid. So I've got the 3A here. Coming over. And this would be the same process no matter which one we would do. Pick that point there. And pick this last point here. After I'm done and it compiles this, what it'll end up doing is overlaying the two files together. Wherever they have a common commonality between them, it's going to make that area black. And then the differences will be in the varying colors. So we can see one is green, one is red. Now, for me being a little colorblind, I probably should have picked different colors. But this is going to work okay. Yes, you probably I probably should have. should have, yeah. But I can start seeing a difference between the two layers in here inside and kind of getting an idea of what's being laid out. Uh, between the two different files and get an idea of maybe where a firewall might be in one instance and where I've got ductwork penetrating, or in this case, just where the structural and architectural, or structural and the mechanical are going over. So I probably didn't get the best of files, but you get a general idea of how these two are working together, what's common between uh, the two files uh, in this case. So one of the things to look at is uh, picking that up and uh, comparing it, probably stripping out the sections and stuff like that. So it's just the 
architectural elements, the mechanical and structural elements that we're looking for in the grids to coincide in there. But that's how this overlay uh, shot works. So that's kind of a nice one to have. Uh, I'm going to open up another file here and get back into the sample area project. So this one's in here where I have all these pretty colors that the architects brought in. Uh, one of the nice things that we can do is we can actually clear those colors out. And this one is done uh, by this color processing tool. This will allow me to come in here and strip out colors. So if there's a particular gray I don't want, I can strip that out. Um, if I've got other colors like this blue, maybe that blue, and so on and so forth. This is identifying colors in the project. I can't preset any of these, but I can go in there, remove those files out. Now when I come in here, I've stripped those colors out of the file. So that can be a nice one just for cleaning up your files, uh, deleting that stuff out when you want to not see it. Or if someone came in and forgot to hit print in color, or uh, print in black and white, and they just printed their color lines from AutoCAD, you can go in and make those yellow lines black or make all the gray lines black so you can actually see and read and convey the idea of what's in there. Um, so that's kind of a great feature to have, especially, uh, again, if you're coming from the AutoCAD background or getting those AutoCAD files and they're still printing in color or you don't have the C, uh, CPT file or anything like that to go in and print them correctly, uh, you can go in and just use the color files and then go in and clean those up, make them black, and work in them. So that's just a nice uh, uh, thing to have. Brian uh, Raymond asked, does the overlay comparison only work for single page docs? No, it doesn't. We can actually do that for a whole multiple page document or um, I might, let me just double check that real quick. I definitely can do a se several pages, so I don't have to do one page. Um, but it only does for files, so I can't point it out a folder. Some items in Revit, you can actually point it out a whole folder, so if each page was a separate item, uh, or each page was a separate uh, uh, PDF file, you could actually have it go through every file. For this comparison one, that's not the case. But in Bluebeam, it's really easy for me to go in and select, um, you know, 100 pages and make that one document. So that's all I would need to do. And, and Wanda asks, uh, can you change line weights? Unfortunately, not. No, you can't. This is not, again, this is, because it's PDF, it's not recognizing it as lines. It's recognizing it as pixels and raster images. So it just looks at, is it black or white? You know, is there is there color there or not color there kind of thing. Uh, that's mostly the answer. It does recognize vector stuff uh, inside, and we'll, we'll see that in a second when we're going to do, actually, I'll, I'll pull, pull that up now. We're going to start doing material takeoffs and, and, and those types of things. So this is a file where I already have some of those material takeoffs in here. And we can see this is a particular room that I've already dropped in side. Um, so prior to getting in here, I have to go in and calibrate this. And I'm just going to use my calibration tool and select two points. So I'm going to select between here, and it snaps right to my grid because this was created in the CAD program. And I'll snap it from here to here. And then I just tell it how wide this is. Now, I know that 300 millimeters, that's... It's going to be 9 feet 10 inches, or close enough there is. And one of you is probably going to correct me a little bit on that. But that's, that's close enough. Now that I've calibrated it, I now can go in and measure right from that area, and then it's going to give me that call, 9 feet 10 inches. So I know I can now measure this document. Um, I've got this hallway in here, and well, you know it's saying that it is uh, 31 meters squared. And that's great and all, but I have no idea. It doesn't convey anything to me. Uh, in here. So I do have this other tool, now that I've calibrated the area tool, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to snap to it. It'll snap to this area here. Whoops, let me try that. Uh, there we go, snapping over there. It'll snap to that corner. And now I can just come in, quickly snap to that area here, clean it up, double click again. And what I'll get is that this particular room, I can go in and grab that particular shape, is, hold on, 325 square feet. So I've got that in here for the conversion. I can come back in the tools and give it a filled region and make it maybe orange, uh, fill opacity, turn that down a little bit. I can go in and grab a hatch pattern in there. So maybe I want to apply a brick hatch uh, inside, make that black, and kind of pull that in here. Uh, in addition to that, I can give it a label. So this is going to be the hallway and list that in as a hall. 
and now I have that built inside. One of the other things I have in here is I've actually already gone in and set up material finishes in here. So I have this as carpet. And based on the area of carpet, I'm coming in, and this is saying it's $975. If I go in, I can change it to hardwood, and I'm going to get $4,000. I can go in there and tile and get that in here. And all that's recorded down at the bottom. I've come in, I set up different parameters to give me some cost estimating stuff inside. And this is really a nice handy feature. It doesn't take that long to go in and set up and do. Uh, but I've auto automatically gone in and say, say, uh, put together material finishes for this particular thing. In addition to that, I have some special tools that I've, I've built up. Uh, and these tools really are easy to do. Uh, these ones in here are out of the box, so th these categories already exist. But inside of mine, I have some other tools uh, in here. I've got one that's an architectural cloud, so I can go in here and draw uh, a cloud in here. Maybe I want to mark this particular area and cloud it. Um, I've got one for different square footages. So if I want to go click on this, I can give myself a special one. And when I double click, it's saying admin and gives me that particular tool inside. I've got another one for electrical, and maybe I want to count outlets. So I can go in here and do one, two, three, four. And you can see it's counting up that number in here. I've got outlet A and outlet B that mean different things. Uh, could also put them so they have a cost factor in them that's adding up a total amount for these. I got another tool in here that will give me linear feet of conduit. So if I start doing that, I can double click, and then I've got the conduit inside. What's behind this is that I have all these separated by what are called layers, so I can turn off the electrical ones or turn off the architectural ones and filter that information out. This is going to keep my product team working smoothly, so maybe the estimators have one set of tools. I've got everybody else working on big doc, bid documents that have another set of tools, and they can go out there and very easily go in and do some cost estimating or putting uh, the project together. And again, all this stuff would be listed down in here, um, so I can look at the different outlets uh, within my project in here. In addition to that, as I'm going in and marking things up, I can give action items. Maybe not for the outlets, but maybe I'm clouding or deltaing something. I want to pass notes back and forth. I'll come in here and I can say that these items are being accepted, rejected, canceled, what department is in charge of these. And what I've done, I can email that out to a team or uh, I can create a summary. Now in here I can create a summary and send it to uh, an Excel file. Uh, that I can be used, especially for the estimating. Um, that, that can be uh, given out to my estimators. They can run it through their own stuff in um, their own Excel files that they already built and run through these. Now in 12, it gives me all the totals and everything, so that will automatically export out to Excel or whatever uh, particular program they want to use in here. In this case, I'm just going to do a PDF summary for what we have inside. Uh, I'll do it for all the pages, and then it'll compile that summary together, and it'll pop up here on the screen in just a second. But I, that can be emailed or handed over to whoever wants to go in and review it. The nice part is a lot of things in this summary will end up being um, linked to the particular item in the list. But here you can see all the different areas, the changes, and the markups. And I have different ways of sending that out uh, to the different uh, people in the area. Uh, nice, another nice thing we can go and do is I can go in here and capture images. So if I wanted to, I can take uh, for all of us out there and um, use that particular picture in, <laughs> in the uh, project we're working on. Everybody got that? No? All right, we'll do it one more time. So, yeah, there it is. You see camera. Hey, there's everybody out. Whoa! And there's me with my beautiful beard. Um, but if I want to attach some pictures of, uh, with this room, I actually can go in there and go to Capture from File. And in this case, I will go into oops, the Student Files. And I've got some pictures in here. So I can go in and append these pictures in here. And now they're embedded in this file. And someone can go in and look at the particular electrical issues or something like that that is um, a, a problem within the file or in there. So someone with an iPad who's in the field can be taking pictures of this. And that's probably the last thing I'm going to uh, kind of cover in here is this is one environment in here called Studio uh, Inside. And where the Studio environment uh, comes into play, and actually I'll pull up some other stuff in here. Oops. Went too far ahead of my slideshow. So the studio has several different things. It has sessions uh, for hosting a meeting, um, so everybody can be following the presenter. 
Well, what's nice about that is that as I'm driving around or Stan here wanted to drive around, we could all be watching yeah. him marking up in the field. And you can give different users uh, different abilities. So based on the groups that they might be in or their email address, I can say this person just has a read-only permissions. This person has full way of marking things up in there, and they can mark it up. And it and uh, it what the great part about it is it has accountability. Even though I created the session, I cannot change anybody else's markups. Whoever created those markups, they're in control. Um, so if we did an action item and said you wanted to uh, work on this particular thing, they could say, I never said that. We could go back to the document and say, yes, it is. It's right here in the documents. It's in here. Or there's no way for anybody else to change what someone else has marked up. It's all being controlled by their particular thing. And only one person needs to have the blue beam to host the session. Not everybody needs to go in there. Um, and so, again, that will be either sessions or, or projects uh, within there. Now, a project would be I can host all uh, files for a project. That's not just PDF files. That would be AutoCAD files, Word documents, Excel documents, whatever we want. That whole project can be hosted in there on the cloud indefinitely. And then someone in the, at the, um, uh, in the field can be uh, there in the office, the portal office, take their iPad, check out a particular document since they're going to be outside a Wi-Fi range, go to the building, respond to a punch list item, mark that up, and then come back to the office, hook that back in, and it puts their markups out there. Speaking of markups, there's a great set of markup tools that exist out of here. So I've got a punch list, and with this punch list items, I can go in here, and I've got different punch list keys that I can put. Whoops, whoa, wrong document. Go back in here and add, add a particular item inside. So we can see clean foreign substance off a surface. So I've got some different in here for punch list. Uh, items that we can go in. And these are out of the box in here. So I've got one for electrical that we can uh, push in here and respond. Another nice thing is if I took the time, I could divide this building up into different what are called spaces. And then by the spaces, wherever I put the punch list, if it coincides in that space, then it automatically says, hey, you have a loose file wire in this particular room. Uh, you've got something else going in this other side of the room. And that's great to have. One of the other nice features is this one called Snapshot. Uh, if you ever have a really big building um, that's divided into many pages, I can basically go in here, take a snapshot of each one of these sections, and then when I'm done, open up a new document, paste that in, and now put all those documents together, uh, and then do my area takeoffs. Now that page might be the size of a, a, a small house by the time you're done, um, because you've combined them all together, but it makes, makes it for a nice way of looking at that, especially guys that are working on roadways or anything else. Uh, I also found that snapshot tool would be useful when creating RFIs or um, creating an email uh, document I wanted to send to my architect. I could take a snapshot of a drawing. Um, I could mark it up in Bluebeam and then copy and paste it into an email or Word document or uh, an RFI document. Yeah, so in this case, if, if uh, and that was Clint talking there, if we wanted to move this particular item and say, show a no, new location, I can go in here and do a snapshot and take a snapshot of that particular item, go in here into, pa go in here into paste, oh, that was copy again, paste, eh. let me do that one more time, don't, don't copy it, something you've already copied. So paste that item in here and say maybe I want to relocate this over here, I can put that in here. Now I want to hide this particular one. It's pretty easy. I'll just take a snapshot of a blank area, paste that again, cover that, and then just mark up a, a new note saying, hey, uh, this is the new location. So they can have a new location over here. Or I could have come in and uh, whoops, clouded that particular item. Kind of went backwards on the cloud there, but cloud that item, let them know what's going on in there. Um, and then flatten that document. So this will be the new revision, and we can see there's a very quick change. Uh, email that back to um, the architect saying, hey, this is, this is my proposal of what's going on in there. Right, Clint? Well, but, additionally, you can use the snapshot tool. You can, you can box out just a certain area there, um, and then a quick Control-C or, or right mouse click. Uh, copy and then you can paste it into a 
you know, just a portion of that document into a Word document. Yeah, that's another thing. So again, uh, what Clint was saying, we can we can use it to do a whole new thing. So if that wants to be a whole new location, now I come in here and say new. What? Now I've got that that new location file in here with all that stuff inside in my email, email that back out. And we can see that that's a brand new document to be sent out. And um, we've, got a, we've got a few questions, comments. Uh, Patrick, yes, sir. You know, if you go to our website, cad1.com, click on the Bluebeam page. I believe there's a comparison chart there. If not, you can certainly go to uh, Bluebeam's website there, and you'll see the comparison of the three versions. Uh, Jubal asks, are, are you using Extreme here? I am. Yeah. And um, then uh, Brady just lets us know he's in love with the uh, tablet version and uh, really loves it. So thank you, Brady. And Raymond, I'll, why don't you send over an email to, uh, to Mr. Porter. And I don't know the, the price of the upgrades right off the top of my head. Uh, I will tell you that uh, this is an extremely economical product as far as software goes anyway and uh, well worth the well worth the price. Uh, let's see. Yes, we are an authorized dealer, Rick. Uh, and you know, Blue Boom, we've been a dealer for about a year and Blue Beam has a you've got to hit certain sales levels um, to get on their website and we're almost there, but it's kind of a pain in the neck really. So it's uh, kind of a drag. Uh, but another thing I want to mention to you while uh, Brian's loading up some things here. I'm just going to the website. Here's the comparison right here on yep. what I will do. So here's the standard, the Canon Extreme, and the iPad uh, that they have listed in here. So you can see right here. And by the way, this was brought up right through Bluebeam, uh, that, uh, this interface. So I can go on the, on the web inside Bluebeam. And that makes it nice. If I need to make a particular link, I can go in here and link uh, anything I want to uh, a product page or something like that that's online. That makes it really nice to have. A couple other things I want to mention. Uh, the Bluebeam folks are going to be here for our Customer Appreciation Day, as I said. And they're going to be uh, actually creating a pr promotional video that day. So any of you that or a couple, three, four of you that are coming to our Customer Appreciation Day that aren't particularly camera shy, they're, they're requesting that if there's a couple, few Bluebeam users that wouldn't mind being on their video, they would like to do a brief interview at our Customer Day. So shoot me an email or shoot one of us an email if you're, if you're interested in uh, participating in that. And... Uh, Let's see. Oh, I know what I was going to mention, and this is very, very important. When CAD1 took this on, we took it on in the way we take any software on, and that's not <laughs> just that we're going <laughs> to... Don't laugh. <laughs> that's not that we're just going to sell the software, but we're going to train on it too. So we are the only live Bluebeam training center in, quite frankly, I think it's the world, uh, I they, think out, outside of Bluebeam. Yeah, yeah they, have their, they have their online training on Bluebeam, but we do uh, live training. Uh, the next class is coming up in July, I believe it is. And so please, if you're interested, a uh, very reasonable cost. It's a day-long class. I look forward to having you here. Brady asks, uh, is there an iOS version yet um, of the full version? Uh, any development plans? Brady, uh, unless you know Brian, I don't know. I don't know, but I can ask. Uh, you know what? Uh, get uh, Hit me up with an email. I will ask uh, now, or I'll ask after we get off of this and just find out. And then uh, Rick has a question. Creating a using, creating a using stamps. I think there's maybe a typo there. If we have stamps in PDF format already, how are those stamps used in review? Oh, uh, directly in. That's kind of what I pulled up in here. So I have uh, stamps in here. If I want to go pick a particular stamp, I can go in here and go to Browse and pick that PDF stamp that I want. Uh, this is the batch stamp. So if I want to apply this to maybe all these documents, I can go in here and pick a particular corner. 
Uh, so let's go in here and pick it in the move in the middle here, and I'll just put it in for approved uh, in here. All the 27 pages. Uh, I I can do this in an open document or one that isn't even open yet. Uh, we have an edit stamp, so if I want to go in here and edit it or change it, I can go ahead and do that uh, within the document. Whoops, it kind of went a little bit too far there, so let me pick that one again. But I basically pointed out that one. So I got the approved where I'm putting it in. Um, all the pages got the range in, hit OK, and then it pretty much just applies that to it. So if you have a particular stamp you're already using, great, no, no real changes that you would need to do for that. Uh, it's pretty seamless, I've found. We can also make forms with this. You can also do your own scripting. Uh, now you can see here's that approved stamp already applied to every single one of my pages in here. It uh, doesn't matter which page I'm on. Oh, one great tool. I totally forgot about this. So what I want to show you is this batch link. So I'm going to come in here. I've got all the uh, particular page numbers in here, but wouldn't it be great if you could just hyperlink yourself right to that detail number? Well, you can. Oh, saving the best for last. That's what this is. I'm going to come in here and link. Uh, I'm going to do this open document. Or, oh, no, wait. Oh, wrong one. Brian, okay, go to link and go to new. Um, add open files and... I don't want that one. The one I want is I want the school. That's the one I want. Everything else is going away here. Too many files open. That's going to be the problem. Next. Okay. So I've got the file name, oh, page labels. That's what I want. So I got those cover sheets in here. And then I'm going to go into settings, look for the underscore, blah, blah. I got all that done. And generate it. So those are going to be the page, the search terms it's looking for. Now the link options. I'm going to highlight those. Hit OK. And run it. So it's going to look through all those files looking for anything that corresponds with the page numbering system and kind of identify that stuff in here. Um, and then it's going to give it a kind of a, oh, that's a bad problem. Oh no, there goes my blue bean. That's quite all right. Go back in, fire that back up. Hit cancel. We can recover from that. One more. You gotta see this one. So hold on folks, you're gonna love it. Next, now I'm gonna go in here to find my page regions because I didn't save those. So I'm just gonna go and use this particular area here. Hit OK generate those, have all those search terms, link options, going to highlight it, hit OK, run it again. And there was a recovery process. So it's created 1,253 hyperlinks, finish and close. What did it link? What did it do? It stopped working. That's what it did. <laughs> wow. Okay, last time, folks. We're going to use it with the... Always when you're demoing these things, right? Burning while it's kind of re, re up <laughs> there. Oh, it kind of, Make it a little it bit easier. Me. It beat me. It beat you? Well, we got a few questions here, but as but you're you're up and running, so it's fast, Stan. This doesn't take time. So I'll just do it with this particular file. Not like not like some of the other questions we get about things. No, Revit Radio, where it takes you a half hour to reload whatever you're working on. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to do it for this sample file because it's only six pages. Hit OK. Generate that list. Hit Run. Finish and close. Now go over to the second page, third page. And inside here, we have all the hyperlinks. So that will hyperlink me right to this page. Um, so if I'm looking at any of these sections or elevations, I've got a hyperlink. One thing I forgot to do is actually run the, so I'll try it again, new, add open files, next, and generate, oops. Actually make it yellow is just a little feature that I forgot to click because I'm just going too fast. So we just wanted to highlight in yellow. The nice part about putting it in yellow is anybody on an iPad will know that it's been linked. So now if I come back in here, I've got the hyperlinks. Hey, it changes you to that page. It takes you to that page. It takes you to that page automatically in here. Now I had one funky one uh, when I was going in here and I was going, well, that worked, but it didn't work on this page. And I kept trying to go, well, what's going on? Why wasn't this working? So I failed to realize I'm already on that page, so it's not linking me to it. So 
I felt kind of silly about it, but that's why this one, these guys didn't turn yellow, is I'm already on those pages for linking it. But that makes it really nice to go in there and do. So there you go, folks. Um, hopefully you've found that quite useful. Let's get a let's get a couple of these questions or get these questions answered. Um, Joshua asks, can you tell Bluebeam a specific location for the stamp or just the uh, preset anchor locations? Um, there's the preset anchor locations for the batch uh, batch one. And let me get in there real quick and get That's, to my. He has a second comment asking about specifically the batch. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Get back in here. Get on my profiles. We're into the wrong one. Takeoffs. There we go. So in the batch, when I'm in here, I can adjust that. So if I did the upper right-hand corner, I can change the X and the Y. So it's just saying, where's your major location? And then you can fine-tune that. And once you have that done, you can kind of uh, keep these settings uh, uh, saved for you so it doesn't have to go back and remember that. So the first time takes a little bit of tweaking, uh, but you can just say what's area of the page you're going to do that for, and then it just going to drop that in here. And that will be this, uh, the same. So if you have different page sizes, it will just adjust that in there. So 24 by 36 or 30 by 42, it's going to base it at the upper right-hand corner, and then I can adjust it over, rotate it, and scale it, those types of things if you want to do that. Jubal asks, can this be linked back to a DWG? No, it cannot be directly linked back into a... Uh, DWG file. Other than the standard, you can open up PDFs inside of Revit. So we can open those PDFs in there, uh, but you cannot link that back in. That's probably the, the biggest downfall with it at the moment, is that it doesn't play directly with AutoCAD or Revit or any other type of file. And Patrick asked, what features have you shown that are not available in the CAD version? In other words, the extreme version the ba of the CAD. The batch link, that's the biggest one that isn't in there. Um, that I've shown. So you won't get that uh, inside. Some of the one, trying to think of anything, and that's only available in 12. That's not even in 11. That was the newest feature they had out for that. The uh, markups and measure, all those are standard. The measure tools uh, for doing area takeoffs, that's all in the CAD version. So you, you have access to those types of things. So that's, that's a nice, uh, those are nice features to have in there. All right, so our next classes are coming up soon in Bluebeam. We'll hope you'll think about joining us. Uh, this is a great product, and really for less than $300, uh, a license, and it, they do have a kind of a tiered license program. So the lower you buy, the cheaper you get. Yep. And uh, great program. I think that one of the things that we might do, we might talk to Brian Haley about, because we did have several people in the civil and um, – uh, mapping and so forth realm here today. I might ask Brian Haley in the near future to do a presentation on Bluebeam for that industry. It's not going to change all that much, no. but it's uh, it'll kind of give folks that you know are dealing with profiles and corridors and all that a little bit of insight on how best to make it work for those particular things. Brian, thank you for preparing yeah. this today and uh, You're my welcome just a couple little things to leave you with again please uh, we didn't really show this environment the studio environment though that's huge especially with tablet interfaces uh, although I know a lot of contractors have really gotten tons out of that and then some other things in there we talked about the markup submittals uh, you can do your own uh, forms and stuff like that that's only available on extreme but create your own buttons that would allow you to uh, apply a stamp uh, plot the whole thing out or save it with a revision number and email it to a team all in one button. Those are types of things you can go and do, create your own RFI forms, di digital signatures, redactions. Uh, and then that search feature or that cloud feature is great for also for documents, uh, for contracts. Hey, I just changed this one word. Just sign it. You know, no, run this real quick and it'll mark up, oh, they added five more things of text you, weren't, you didn't know about in that 500-page contract document you were about to sign. All right, so we're going to wrap up here. Rick Rick does have a question. Uh, did you say you can open a PDF file in Revit? Um, no. no. <laughs> and then, um, Sorry, if I did, I didn't mean that. Christopher said, uh, is uh, this available for the uh, an Android device? And he's saying Android, sorry. Um, well, that you can do a... Uh, interface for opening it up if you've got a Windows tablet or something like that and, and you can open that up in that particular area but not 
not Android specifically that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Although they might be working on that. So I'll ask the question. I know they were talking about it, but I don't think it's out yet. And uh, come and see the, the folks from Bluebeam at our Customer Appreciation Day on June 27th, and you can ask them all hard questions right directly to yourself. Thank you very much, folks. We appreciate your time, your business, and your loyalty to CAD1. It's very nice to have you with us. Have a good day. Bye now.